In bear country, Christmas excitement was mounting. The waiting was down to 10 hours and counting. The holly was hung. The presents were bought. A magnificent Christmas salmon was caught. Hey, everybody, I'm home. Hey, look, what? Look. Most fun of all, getting the tree. A tree full and fat, straight, green, and tall, for the Christmas delight of the bears, one and all. magnificent tree, a tree full and fat with oodles of needles and crannies and nooks. Get out the tree things. Where are the hooks? boxes of things in closets and cupboards and corners of halls. They had bangles and bells and bright colored balls. There were some that were bear looms saved year after year. A Santa bear sled with tiny reindeer. Strings of bright beads to hang in festoons. A musical bear that sang Christmassy tunes. Tis the season to be furry, especially if you're a bear. But the bear's finest tree thing, their finest by far, was the thing for the top, their Christmas tree star. It had 18 points and was so glittery bright that the stars of the heavens seemed dim in its light. What an array, what a display. What a grand and glorious sight it will be when we hang all this stuff on our Christmas tree. Why, bears will come from near and far to see how Christmassy we are. Ta-da! So all the bears needed now, don't you see? All that they needed now was the tree. A tree straight and tall. Fine, full, and fat. Come, cubs, said Papa, as he put on his hat. Now be sure to dress warmly, said wise Mama Bear. There's more than a hint of snow in the air. And oh, yes, buy our tree down the road from Grizzly Gus. I'm sure he will have the right tree for us. Snow, said Papa, sniffing the air. Not a chance. The weather today will be bright and fair. <laughs> Besides, I can always tell if we're going to have snow by a sharp shooting pain in my left big toe. Bye-bye, Mama. Bye-bye. Bye, Mom. Bye-bye. As for Gus and those trees lying in stacks, <laughs> not for us. Papa said as he took up his axe. <laughs> I don't mean to fuss, but Mom said to buy one from Grizzly Gus. Christmas trees. <laughs> Fresh cut indeed. <laughs> it looks more like some overgrown evergreen weed. <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas, Gus. Well, we were just, uh, <clears throat> come, cubs. Do, do, do. 
Now, brother and sister usually did what mom said, but not papa. Pop did whatever came into his head. And a fine, fat tree is what came into his head that particular Christmas. No matter what, no matter where, if it means going down to the Panama Isthmus, if it means climbing up to the top of Pike's Peak, I will find the right tree if it takes us a week. But, Papa, Christmas is just hours away. We must find our Christmas tree today. But Pop didn't hear. Papa was just a bit carried away. We need a tree for Christmas, a fine fat tree is a must. Without one tiny Christmas day would be an awful bust. A tree on which to hang our bells are brightly colored balls. And all the other things pop up in glasses and in walls. A fine fat tree to put beneath our 18-pointed star. A tree to show how really truly Christmassy we are. A Christmas tree and all that it implies. and berry honeycomb. Crayfish for kissing. But first of all, my friends, first we need a tree. Yes, first, first of all, all, dear friends, first we need a tree. We need a tree for Christmas, a fine fat tree is a must. Without one frankly, Christmas day will be an awful bust. But Paul was forgetting something that day. Christmas is more than show and display. It's more than just tinsel and pink plastic stars and stuffing yourself with sugar nut bars. There was something important that Pop was forgetting. Christmas is forgiving. It isn't forgetting. This was a time to be thinking of others. Mamas, Papas, sisters, brothers. A time to think of each neighbor and friend. But all that was forgotten as they rounded a bend. As they rounded that bend, what did they see? Papa's perfect Christmas tree. What a tree. What a tree. This surely was it. Its green was so green. Its tall didn't quit. Its nooks all had crannies. Its crannies had nooks. The one question was, would they have enough hooks? What a tree for our bells, our bright colored balls, and all the things stacked up in our closets and halls. The perfect tree to put beneath our 18-pointed star. The perfect tree to show how Christmassy we are. Stand back, said Papa, making ready to chop. Wait! Sister cried. Please, Pop. On the timely advice of small sister bear, Pop managed to stop that axe in midair. And a good thing, too, for that Christmas tree trunk just happened to be the home of a skunk. <laughs> and some squirrels and a grouse and one small chipmunk also resided in that Christmas tree's trunk. Plus 26 crows who were renting upstairs. And they were none of them happy to see those three bears. Though this tree at first seemed quite a find, it isn't quite what I had in mind. Come, Cubs! There was something else Pa hadn't in mind as they rapidly left Mr. Skunk's tree behind. That the coming great day was the crow's Christmas, too. And the squirrels. And the chipmunks. If he chopped down their tree, what would they do? And the skunk and the grouse. What would they do if he chopped down their house? Where would they have their holly and bells? Their Christmas goodies? Their Christmassy smells? How would they enjoy their Christmas feast? 
But such questions as those did not bother Papa, not in the least. His head was so filled with his bangles and bells, his bright colored balls, his tree things stacked up in closets and halls, that there just wasn't room for anything more. Onward, cried Papa, and the bears pressed on with their Christmas tree chore. I will find the right tree. I must and I will. I will forward every stream. <laughs> Climb any hill. Go over Niagara Falls on a log. Penetrate the impenetrable fog. Brave the terrors of sinister bog. I will find the Christmas tree we seek. I will find the right tree if it takes us a week. No matter what. No matter where. Just as sure as my name is Papa Q Bear. But please, Papa, please, we must find a tree soon. Sister's right, Dad. It's getting late in the afternoon. A oh, tree, fine and fat, straight, green, and tall. And at that Ooh. very moment, the snow mom predicted started to fall. Hey, wait, Papa, hold it, wait for us, wait. Chocolate-covered snails! Chocolate-covered snails! Yeah! Yes, a Christmas tree is something we cannot do without. Because a tree with all the trimmings is what Christmas is about. What a tree! Yeah, it's really a beauty. Max, Papa said, <laughs> do your duty. It was quite a fine tree. Sedate and tall, graceful and regal. It was also, it happened, the home of an eagle. And a hawk. And a wolf. And a great snowy owl. The eagle took off, while the hawk and the wolf and the great snowy owl set up a terrible, terrible howl. The noise seemed to come from every direction. Then, Mr. Eagle expressed his objection. back there wasn't quite it. Its green was too green. Yeah, and it leaned a bit. It wasn't quite what I had in mind. Come, we still have a tree to find. Completely ignoring Papa's left big toe, the snow had become a really big snow. A snow of snows, a blizzard of blizzards. Why, there was snow on the ground, up to their gizzards. Up the mountain, follow me. I'll find one soon, you'll see. You'll see I'll find the perfect Christmas tree. I hope so, Dad. The snow's getting deep, and the mountain is getting pretty steep. Full and fat, tall and green. 
the finest tree you've ever seen. Now that is the kind of tree I mean. But Papa was silent as he looked at that tree. Strangely silent. What did he see? What Papa saw through the driving snow was a tiny window within a glow. Pop hardly breathed. He spoke not a word. What he saw through the window was a tiny snowbird busily trimming his Christmas tree with the help of the members of his family. Their tree was a twig decorated with seeds that the tiny snowbirds had collected from weeds. And for the first time that day, Papa saw Christmas in a different way. Maybe it was the tiny twig tree, or maybe the seeds that helped Papa see the other guy's needs. But whatever it was, Pa shouldered his axe and spared the tree. He remembered what Christmas is really about. He'd had it all backwards and inside out. This is a time to be thinking of others. Mamas, papas, sisters, brothers, fellow creatures great and small, fellow creatures one and all said the cubs what about our tree the tree for our bells our bright colored ball and all that stuff in our closets and halls no problem at all there's no need to fuss we'll go back and buy one from grizzly gus grizzly, grizzly gus? gus but papa don't bother me with questions please here now hop to it Put on these skis. So Pop and the Cubs put on skis and went back for one of old Grizzly's trees. When they got back to the Christmas tree lot, the lot was there, but the trees were not. Only a sign saying, sorry, sold out, and some tired old needles lying about. When Sis saw those needles, well, she thought she might cry. But then, something wondrous caught her eye. Somebody has decorated our house. And somebody had. The chipmunk, the skunk, the crows and the grouse, the eagle, the owl, and all of the others, and quite a few of their sisters and brothers, were returning the kindness Pa showed those snowbirds. The bears, they were speechless. They just had no words. All of the bear's tree things were there. The bangles, the bells, the musical bear, the Christmas tree star, the Santa bear sled. Why, everything's shining! Sister suddenly said. Then, a very special starry light filled the sky that Christmas Eve night. It didn't come from that pink plastic star. It was the light of the Christmas star. The true Christmas spirit shone down that night. It filled the whole sky with a lovely light. It charged the cold, clear, bear country air. It reached the heart of every bear. 
and their fellow creatures, one and all, nature's creatures, great and small. The Christmas star, it says to us, there's more to Christmas than the fuss. There's kindness, love, and warmth, God bless. Squeezes, hugs, and happiness. The Christmas star, it says to us, there's more to Christmas than the Not just bears like me and you, but nature's other creatures too. Wiggly worm and platypus, little hippopotamus. Yes, and even people too. They are nature's creatures too. So Merry Christmas to us all. Fellow creatures, one and all. So Merry Christmas, one and all. Fellow creatures, great and small. Merry Christmas, one and others bit. How about the salmon? How about it? Your remark shows wit and perception. But in the case of the salmon, <laughs> it will make an exception. Mm -hmm. 